Back in July, I had the opportunity to hop on a float plane with three friends of mine and head to a place that was new to all of us, Sasaginagak Lodge, in search of pike and walleye. This is our trip. That's what on earth is going on there. Oh, it's a huge walleye! Ned him, oh Ned him, get under him! Un good morning, good morning, good morning. Guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jay Stevens. I like to make fishing videos, and uh, today we're doing that. We're going fishing, we're heading north, and we are hopping on a float plane. I've not been on a plane in probably three months, something like that, and uh, excited to be doing it again. Obviously, COVID putting a freeze on a lot of travel. We are back, we are in Manitoba, and I think this is our plane around the corner. I'll give you guys a peek. We're with Northway Aviation, and something that's pretty unique about Northway Aviation is they also own a fishing lodge. The same family that owns the airline owns a lodge, which is pretty unique. The lodge is called Saskinigak Lodge. I haven't been there before. I've heard lots about it. There's our plane. And uh, yeah, I've assembled a crew of some of the finest anglers from Northwest Ontario and Manitoba. And we're going fishing for a couple days. So very excited to kick this off. We will check in with you guys when we're back in the plane. And yeah, it should be a good trip. Here's our crew. They all look the same. We got Troy. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you remember Troy from the trout don't, tour? Don't equate me. <laughs> you remember Josh from being cooking? He, he likes to cook. He likes to cook. And you remember Jaden from living in an ice castle? We brought the three all stars. It felt so good to be back in a float plane, flying over the Canadian Shield, and something that makes this place so convenient is actually how short of a float plane ride it is. Only 45 minutes northeast of Winnipeg, and we were landing at Saskinigak Lake in Atakaki Provincial Park. Get the shot, Jay? Trying to. Hello, hello, how are you? Good, how are you guys doing? We're doing great. Amazing. What do you think, Troy? Troy just got a smile on looks, his face the whole time. Fishy. The plane's landing and Troy's just got the biggest grin. What do you think of your first full plane ride? That's been the highlight of the trip so far. Absolutely. So so cool, eh? Flying low and seeing everything. Like, you don't get that on a commercial. Can you no, give a welcome to, welcome to Sask? Can you do a little, a little intro? A little intro? Yeah. All right. We just landed on Lake Sasaginagak. We are here at Sasaginagak Lodge. This is going to get super repetitive. <laughs> We're going to our cottage right now. Things are looking amazing. We've got some shield. We've got some water. We're checking out our cabin. There you go. Welcome to, this is called the Super 6 Executive Suite, I think. This is beautiful. Big main dining area. We got camera gear, we got more camera gear, and we got more camera gear. We got the wood stove if it gets chilly, we got the air conditioner if it gets hot, we got big leather couches, and we got Josh in the kitchen. I'll give you guys a tour of the rest of this place here. Here's got the lake map that got marked up here. We've got lots of beds. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten people you can sleep in here. Yeah, guys, we're going to, uh, we'll give you a tour of the main lodge later. Uh, we're getting some lunch, getting some camera gear ready. This is, this is gonna be phenomenal. Sasaginigak Lodge in Eastern Manitoba. We're gonna be fishing for walleye and pike. That's basically gonna be the focus. Next time you see us, we'll probably be headed out in the boat. All right, everyone's waiting for me. 165 Alumacrafts, 30s. We got boat one. Boat Jayden number one. And Josh, is it true that you boat don't know one. how to drive a tiller boat, Josh? Pardon me? What? I don't know how to, excuse me? Sorry? Boat number two, Troy and Jay. First to a thousand walleye wins. Easy, oh, pff, easy. Before noon. We are out here and we're, we got we got a pretty good game plan. Jaden and Josh are way out there and Josh brought along walkie talkies, which is gonna be so good to kind of split apart and break. Yeah, we just filled the live well. <laughs> <laughs> they just filled the live well. We haven't started fishing yet. A uh, couple things that are gonna help us this trip. Every boat has a Helix 5, 
which has auto charting and GPS capabilities, which is incredible. This lake is not charted. So we're driving around, we're looking for fish, we're mapping as we go. I'll show you a little more in depth on, on how that works. But right now we kind of split up. Uh, the walkie talkies are gonna be super key. So we're gonna fish a little bit, they're gonna fish a little bit. And once one of the boats get on, then we'll, uh, we'll tag team them. But for now, we're just gonna probably start with jigs and minnows, um, fishing just an extended rock finger off of this seagull rock. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's see if Troy can, uh, see if he still has the touch from his walleye fishing last fall. Three inch gulp on a Acme Google Eye jig. I was marking some fish in, kind of on the top of the hump, kind of 18 feet. Drops off to 30, 30 some feet on either side. Ooh, I like these boats, I like the graphs. Come on, how long was that? <laughs> Where's the walkie-talkie? I need to tell the guys. It's in my lap. <laughs> Boys, we got a walleye on! We got a walleye on! Oh, that's a nice one. Wow. It's a good one, boys. Uh, how many inches? That's what we're wondering. Somewhere between uh, uh, 21 and 24. All right, Troy, how, how long was that? 37 seconds? Probably less. Something like that, not even. He's got the touch, folks. First one. Little, little battered. That fish has had a rough life, I think. Nothing wrong with that? Yeah. Boom, good job, buddy. I don't think we need to keep any yet. Yep. <laughs> this could be good fishing. <laughs> this is, this is good. This is good. Boys, we got another one. You actually might want to come over here. We've been fishing like 30 seconds. Come on! <laughs> oh. That's... Jeez, guys, we can't even get camera set up. The pike are on the walleye spots too, apparently. Everyone's catching. We've got three fish right now. Another one. Jig, gulp, on. We're fishing the top for the big ones. On the way down, Troy. Double! That is a good walleye right there. One and two. Double. Doubled. He's on it. Beautiful. That's our biggest one yet for sure. This guy, he ate it. We got a 28 pound walleye over. Jaden just got a nice one. A really big one. We're gonna measure this guy real quick. That's gonna be pretty close to Manitoba Master. Give me a quick look once you lift them out and then they'll throw them on the board. Oof. That is a big old walleye. Okay, let's get him on the bump board. 27. Look at that blue on that. 27 incher. Nice fish, I man. Try to... Saying goodbye to a big koala. He's ready to go. Nice. He's been moving around and kind of split up, and you guys just found a, a good spot. What is this? Just another shelf, sort of? No, it's just a little rock and a mud flat. They there you go. Be hanging around. What do you think, Josh? Unbelievable, like it's been non-stop. <laughs> yeah, it hooks it after, hooks it after, hooks it. We're gonna stop filming and we're gonna catch some fish of our own. What'd you catch that one on? Swim bait? Swim bait. Nice. You don't need bait. And a walleye jig. Ooh, that's, that's a little better. Looks bigger. That's better. Ooh, we might want to net this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, baby. If it's a walleye, it's a good one. We're into something good. <laughs> that's what on earth is going on there. It's a lake trout! I get like one shot at it in a super light line. If it's a pike, I don't think it'll be that big. I think if it's a walleye, it'll be big. All right, get ready. Oh, it's a huge walleye. Net him, net him, get I'm under him, hooked. under him, under him, Troy. I'm hooked. Under him. I'm hooked. Oh, that's a big walleye. Oh, that's huge. Oh, yes. That was insane. Troy was hooked out of the edge. Oh my goodness. I was not expecting that to be a walleye. All right, we are going guys. All right, big fish handling 101. We got to minimize time out of the water. We got the bump board, we just opened it up. 
We are gonna hold it up for the camera and we're gonna show you guys on the bumper. This is an absolute hog. I was not expecting this. I was thinking big bike. Look at this walleye guys, Saskinigak. That is a big Manitoba walleye going on the bump board. Trophy is 28. We got, yeah, just over, just 28 on the nose. Exactly, 28 and a quarter maybe. All right, with these big fish, always support them by the belly. That right there, first day and uh, the trip's made. And the big thing is now, is I'm gonna hold on to this fish and wait till he kicks. I'm not gonna force him off. And another thing that I see people doing sometimes is they'll drag fish backwards in the water and actually water's not made to go backwards through the gills. So it's going in the mouth and out the gill. So if anything, you wanna point the fish the direction you're drifting and kind of just hold him there. Let him, like right now he's ready to go. Look at that big golden beast. All right, buddy, thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, like 26, 27, a big pike. Unbelievable. I, I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Honestly, I thought we don't, I, I, I wasn't expecting this many big wallets. All right guys, so this is what caught that big fish. I was, uh, yeah, I was just kind of dragging it around. So this is called the drop shot. And basically the beauty of the drop shot, this is a great rig for beginners as well, for bass fishing, for walleye fishing, is how it works is you've got your leader, your line, your, this, I have eight pound fluorocarbon in this case, to a small octopus type drop shot hook, and then whatever length leader you want, and then you clip a weight on the bottom. And the beauty of this is as long as you have your weight on the bottom, I can just shake my rod tip and I know that that bait is 12 inches off the bottom, which is like, perfect strike zone, right? So you can adjust that accordingly. Um, but you know, if, if it's someone that has a tough time feeling bottom, drop shot is great because you keep the weight planted and you just shake your rod tip and that minnow is just quivering. We're just using golf, nothing fancy. These fish are not educated. This is as good as it gets for Canadian flying walleye fishing, crushing fish. And so far I've been very, everyone I think would agree, pretty impressed with this fishery. The rain is coming. We have had an, an incredible first couple hours. Uh, the camera's gonna probably stay away for a little bit unless something else happens, but just imagine us setting the hook on a bunch of walleyes. Well? Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even take a cast yet. Do you actually have a fish, Josh? Well, it's uh. You lost it. I don't know if it's still on there. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, really it's, it's on there, yeah. It's just uh, it's just acting all funny like. Let's see what we got here. First fish. Here it is, just a little tiny baby walleye from wow. right there. We didn't even need to go out on the boat today. Bro, dude, yeah. The legend is true. There's, there's walleye caught them on here. this dock. Apparently they catch big ones here off the dock. Like Yeah, giants. Master but size. This is a good little start, you know? So basically it's us against these two guys. Oh. This is the competition. What are your guys' names? Braxton. Braxton Noah. and? Noah. Noah, Braxton and Noah, all right. Game on, I'm Jay, Josh, Jaden. We'll, uh, we'll give you guys a five fish head start, okay? Yeah, six to one, six to one. Perfect. All right, we're coming back. All right guys, we're gonna give you a first person perspective what the dock fishing is like. It's asking a gack. All right, I'm casting the swim bait. It's actually pretty deep here. I drove by and just was looking at my graph when we boated into our cabin over there and it's like 25 feet in front of Josh and then right at this corner it came up to 15. Drop till it hits the bottom and then just kind of swimming at a couple feet, letting it hit bottom, swimming at a couple feet. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh, oh no! That was a nice walleye. <laughs> that was a nice walleye. Things are getting out of control. Guys, this is incredible. I didn't think it was this good. I did not think it was this good when I saw people catching walleyes off the dock. I was like, oh, show me. Ooh, that's a good one. Beautiful. Oh, here we go. Get him. Rex, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. This is it. If you get this fish in, it's gonna make it on YouTube. All right, you reel them close and I'll grab them. Oh, oh, okay. Sling them to me. You wee, you wee. That was all you. Here, hold them up. Anything? I don't know how. Just under the belly? You got them? Anything you wanna to say to everyone on YouTube? Um, I don't know. What's your favorite color? Blue. Yeah. <laughs> all right, put them back. All right, that's it, boys. I'm calling it. 
Thank you for joining us. We'll call it, we'll call it a tie. Sasaginagak Lake is one of the gems of Atakaki Provincial Park and the lodge is in such a perfect location located smack dab in the middle of this 8600 acre lake and they're the only lodge on it which is absolutely incredible. This place is a cool mixture of do-it-yourself with your own private cabins and dock but as well the convenience of a main lodge with staff that were more than willing to help with whatever we needed. Good morning. It is day two at Saskanagak and we have our guide sitting in the boat. Look at Jaden. Jaden's just ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> Full guide mode. Welcome back guys. It is day two. We are here for three days. This is not a long trip, but yesterday ex exceeded expectations. The fishing was absolutely incredible. Even just the walleye fishing off the dock last night. That was wild. If you guys have ever thought about going on a flying trip and you are living in Canada, this, this, is, this is your year. I know I've mentioned this before, but normally these cabins are booked up. Yeah, this is a very affordable place to come if you want to experience fine fishing because as I mentioned earlier, they own the airline as well. So that's how they can make it so affordable is because they're flying in. They're always making flights past here and, and different stuff. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's uh, as far as flying lodges go, this is definitely one of the more uh, affordable options. I'm gonna rally the rest of the guys and day two is about to begin. What are we doing, Josh? What's the plan? So, um, so what we have going on here is on some of these, uh, what do they call those, sconces? Lamps? The chandeliers. The chan chandeliers. In a couple locations in this place, we've got actual spoons for fishing lures. And they've got a little treble hook on the back. And you can see them right there. They're pretty well crafted. And they've got some names of some, uh, I think, you know, past campers on there. And we are going to huck those in the water today. We might upgrade the treble. Yeah, I were upgrading the tre treble. But I think we could catch a fish with that. I'm gonna maybe troll that today. Like it's probably got some good action to it, yeah. right? I can picture it. I can picture it doing one of these in the water. And that just like agitates the pikes. So we're, we're going for giant pikes today and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna catch them. Are we still on? Yes. All right guys, we're going to an old conservation lookout tower from I don't even know the 60s or the 70s. It's been decommissioned, so we're not gonna climb it. Um, but we're gonna, you know, go put the drone up and maybe see what it looks like. It's pretty cool, pretty cool deal. It's kind of uh, kind of unique to just have this massive tower in the middle of nowhere. Anyways, here we go. You just wanna shoot from here? This is probably good, eh? Yeah, it looks pretty perfect to me. Over. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see it in the background. There's a tower. Where's my hand pointing? Uh, you might be able to see it right there. Anyways, we're going we're gonna to get you an aerial view of this cool little lookout point. What you got? I'll land him for you. Bring him here. Nice, Walter. That was a good day for, uh, for fishing. Look at that. That's a nice fish. Hooey! I want to show you guys what to look for. What, how to set up, how I like to set up my graph. Kind of what to look for. You know, this is a, uh, a, a pretty basic graph. It has a lot of features. Oh, it's a Helix 5, so it's a good entry level. You can get them for like five, 600 bucks. Yeah, a lot of people buy them as portable units. And I normally bring my, my big graph up with like side imaging and down imaging and all that stuff. But I was like, you know what? Helix 5 will be great. It's got GPS, it's got auto chart, which is a pretty amazing feature on these uncharted lakes. So I wanna bring you guys along. We're gonna just go drive until I see something interesting on the graph and then I'll show you what to look for and you know what I like to fish. But first off, I'm gonna show you what you need to do. So if you press exit here, if you press the exit button a couple times, it kind of flips through all the screens. You've got straight mapping, you've got uh, straight sonar, you've got just, I don't know, like 16 different options, flasher mode. So this is the mode I want. I want half on graph, half on 2D. So now I'm gonna go into menu, press menu again, and then there's all the options on the top here. I'm gonna go HB chart, hummingbird chart. 
auto chart live and then make sure it's flipped to on. That means it's gonna be recording as I drive and it's gonna create a map. You can dial in the settings as you want them and, and you know, how many colors there are and what the deepest of the lake is you can set and that'll, that'll change all your mapping stuff. But for now, I'm just gonna get it rolling. Um, these units internally can record about eight hours of um, auto chart data. I actually brought my own card, it's called the Zero Lines card, which is something you have to buy for like 150 bucks, but you can kind of record unlimited data then. And the other thing it has, which is very handy, is uh, the outline of the lake, just to, you know, a colored in outline. So it also just is nice to have a map to know where you're at in the lake, where the islands are and all that stuff. So. Enough talking, we're gonna start driving around and kind of look for some deeper structure. I, I, a lot of the lake is 30 to 40 feet we've seen, so uh, I'm gonna look for a spot that maybe comes up to 20 or 15 and then ho hopefully we mark fish. So anyways, we got the sonar screen recording and Troy and I are gonna go for a little cruise. So I saw a little bit of rock there. I'm gonna try to do a just a little bit of a shallower pass here and a little tighter to shore because I might have just hit the tip of whatever reef was sticking out. Look at that. See how it just shot up a little bit? That's good, and right there, see that little arc? Little arc right there, that is probably a walleye. Could, could have been a boulder. Sometimes it's tough to tell when they're near the bottom, but that next mark I say would be a walleye. It's coming shallower here. So now I'm gonna zoom in on my map. There's another fish hanging off the rock. So now I'm zooming in on my map. So this is creating a chart as we drive. So I'm gonna kind of loop back and forth there's fish right there. See that separated off the bottom? That is a Walter. Oh no. Oh, we're out. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Came out of the snag and into a walleye's mouth. Oh, look at that rock bass. Huge, huge rock bass. We are measuring this guy. That's a chunk. Look at that tank. Look at that potato, nine and a half incher. Boom. And Troy's got a walleye. All right, that big, beautiful rock bass is going back. So I'm using a 3 8 ounce bullet nose jig with a three inch swim bait. And it's just such a good search bait. 3 8 is pretty heavy, but it, uh, it gets down pretty quick. And then I'm using anywhere from eight to a 12 pound floral leader. And I'm using, uh, in this case, I'm using 15 pound braid, a little bit heavier for casting. But uh, just, yeah, my favorite way to, one of my favorite ways to catch walleye is just so good for searching and cover so much water. All right, that was a phenomenal morning once again. So, so many walleyes, I, I mean, you guys have seen it. There's just unlimited walleye in this lake. Hopefully you learned a little bit about, you know, what I'm looking at on the graph. Uh, you know, if you, uh, if you come up here, you don't need to bring a graph. That's amazing. The fact they have Helix 5s in all of them, in all their boats is, is phenomenal. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna head back, have lunch, and then maybe do a little exploring this afternoon. Maybe a little more pike. Maybe check out some waterfalls, see what else is going on. Troy. Let's do it. Let's go get some nice, Photography of the, where are we going? The We're rapids. going. Go to the river. We are checking out some rapids, uh, some of the more scenic part of the lake that we haven't explored yet. Uh, we, we got stopped by some rain for the past couple hours. We came back for a uh, delicious lunch prepared by Josh. Now we're headed back on the lake. We will do some fishing, but we want to just explore, check what's, check what's going on, some waterfalls, some pretty footage, and yeah. We made it! To the falls. The rain's letting up. Uh, Josh and I are still trying to catch a fish. How you doing there, Grandpa? With the spoon. Uh, I actually missed one as soon as we showed up, but beautiful spot. Really nice trip coming here. I will show you what it looks like soon, once the, once the rain dies off. I was gonna take that for you and do a little filming.
It's our last day. This is it. Third and final day. Um, and weather was a little poor yesterday. Today it got windy, but we're finally seeing some blue skies. Before we head out on the water, I thought I'd give you guys a little tour of the main lodge. The main lodge is beautiful. This is where they've got Wi-Fi, a store, a conference room, and it's just like a beautiful, beautiful building. This is the main dock that we were fishing at the other night. All right, giving you guys a quick tour of the main lodge. This building is beautiful, big place to come hang out. And look at these fish on the wall. Look at that pike. Hogs. We're gonna do a little pike fishing today. Hopefully we can find one of those. Here you got the store, get your SAS merch. And if you're doing a little business trip up here, you got your printer, got your TV, business stuff. This is where people come from to SAS, kind of all over. But like I said, for now, this is your opportunity if you're Canadian to come and get primetime dates at some of these places. But anyways, we're gonna go check, see if the guys are done breakfast. What's the game plan today? Um, I'm gonna finish eating this here sausage. A lot wavier today than we've uh, we've been having. It's been pretty nice. We're gonna catch pike on a spoon. We're looking for pike, huge pike on a huge spoon. A real kitchen spoon that you eat with. That's the game plan. So, that and a couple walleyes. Boom. See that right there? That is green cabbage weed. That is what pike love. It's, uh, what is it, middle of July? It's middle of July and, and now weeds are up in a lot of these lakes, northern lakes and pike transition from the back of these muddy bays to the weeds. And they could be main lake, they could be near the bays. Uh, yeah, we found a little neck down. Typically between islands or near beaches is a good place because uh, the cabbage will grow in a sandier type bottom. But anyways, this is what Troy's gonna be using. Cool bait fish looking deal. And I'm gonna be throwing, not the kitchen sink, but the kitchen spoon. This is gonna catch a pike yet. I got hit on it yesterday. Today I'm gonna score. All right. Josh got a pike out of spoon. We're coming. Kind of. Did you spoon feed him? We did it. We literally just spoon fed a pike. Nice. Show me. There it is. <laughs> on the dinner spoon. Pike on a dinner spoon. So good. Awesome. Feisty little guy. We just need a bigger one. We got to upgrade on the dinner spoon. Should have brought a fork maybe or a butter knife. Yeah, the old butter knife would have been nice. There we go. Should we keep rolling? I honestly love the action on this thing. <laughs> it's so perfect. It's time for a derby. You guessed who our competitors are. That's our competitor. Zuh. What's the plan? First, first to 30? Yeah, let's go first to 30. First to first, 30 first, wallet. Both to 30. 215 starting right now. First to 30, loser has to cook dinner. Three, two, one, go. Go. Lines in. They're already in. Wait, no they're not. I hate go. losing, so we better do this. <laughs> okay, Troy, we gotta get deeper. We're way too shallow. You're playing real dirty. Wait till I cast your line and cut, cut your jig off. Don't think I won't. Well, we got 30 to go, Troy. Number one, for Team Siemens Voss. One to one. Too much pressure. We're on. Two to two. Is it worth bonus points if it's big? Look at that. Nice fish on the swim bait. That was in like eight feet of water. These fish are shallow, they're like eight feet of water. Don't let those other guys know. Number four. Got him. We're on. We're on. Six to three. Troy, there we go. Eight. Number nine. 11 and 12. This is 11 and 12. 11 and 12, double header. 13. 14. Oh, this could be it. Oh no. Mine's not a walleye. 29 for Troy. The gators have turned on. Looks like we needed to be fishing deeper for the pike the whole time. Uh-oh. I'm sensing a comeback. They got 22. We've been at 29 for way too long. Plane, shoot, we gotta film this. Yeah! Oh, there's 30. Oh, we got <laughs> number 30. Come on, Troy, finish it up. Get him in. Oh, he's barely, get him in, get him in, get him in. Yes! What do we got? 30 is what we got. We got 30! 
on the bus by two, all of a sudden my rod is bouncing. <laughs> wow, so cool. We got buzzed by the plane. They're just dropping off some more guests at the lodge. 30 walleye, they caught 25, 50 to 60 walleye in two and a half hours fishing new spots that we just were driving and you know dropped down as we went. Pretty incredible. It, this is just, it makes you feel like such a good fisherman here because there's walleyes on every spot, pike fishing. They're in the bays, they're in the weeds, off the dock, like I said, and, and every hump we stop at, there's at least a couple walleye. Incredible. Troy. People don't usually ask me for my opinion on things. Okay, well this is your first flying trip. Oh, uh, we'll do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah. Especially your proximity to Winnipeg. That was actually one of the coolest things, like when I think of going on like good fishing trips, like destination fishing places, I always associate that with this dreaded long drive that's just you think it's automatic that has to be taken and it was uh from not even living in winnipeg hour and a half to the airport 48 minute buzz ride in and all of a sudden it's like wow we're here at yeah. this. that's really cool josh yeah what do you have to say oh man for me it's Putting like you the spot beautiful views massive amazing cottage right there there's bedrooms in there that are gigantic with beds everywhere so you can have a party have a bunch of bunch of the boys out and uh, <laughs> make, have a good little family trip. And I think the best thing is there's a deck right there. You can watch the lake, you can watch the sunset. All can, while deep frying. You can go barefoot and deep fry right here. Look at the proximity here. This is amazing. No sandals, nothing. I'm just like hanging out <laughs> with my bare feet. There's a couple beautiful Adirondacks right there. You can watch the sunset. There's birds flying by. It's, they, they got everything. It's everything. All right. What do you have to say? It's beautiful. I mean, it seems you can drive literally anywhere and catch fish. So it's, it's pretty cool there. We caught some big ones on the first day, even yesterday and today we caught some nice ones too. And it's just a really special place when you can go like anywhere. Every spot. Yeah. Every, like every single spot you try, you catch fish. Jane's cutting up some fish. Josh is taking some pretty pictures. Job Tro site supervisor. Troy supervising. Guys, this has been a phenomenal trip and it's not difficult fishing. We've you know, as you saw, caught, we caught fish off the dock, we caught fish in our bay. I mean, the furthest we boated was to the waterfall, which was what, 20 minutes? Yeah, something like that. That, that was like to one of the farthest corners of the lake, so it's, it's, it's a big enough lake that there's lots of different spots to fish, but it's not overwhelming. And uh, if you know what to look for in your graph, it's, it, it, it was pretty fun because we just went from spot to spot to spot, fishing new spots all the time and catching fish, so. Well, I like grease and I like beer. I like eating my fish right down here. That's all I got. This is my country song. Fish sandwiches? Fish Sammy's coming right up. I want to thank the entire crew at Northway Aviation and Saskinagak for giving us the trip of a lifetime. I'm always amazed by the incredible angling opportunities so very close to Winnipeg. I cannot wait to come back to Sask.